let me give you an example of how to find the minimum effective dose of change using a continuous glucose monitor to hack your blood sugar. My name is Karen Kennedy and I'm a functional nutritionist. I specialize in helping people use a continuous glucose monitor to hack their blood sugar. So this is the third video in a series of teaching you the process of using a CGM to optimize your blood sugar. And this is stage two. This is stage two. You've already done stage one, which is take two weeks and just collect data. Just collect data. And after you've collected data, 14 days of data, you can make a hypothesis of what's going on and what you think might help. And that's a hypothesis you use to create your experiment for the next week or two. So let me give you an example of how we use this process to find the minimum effective dose of change. Let's contrast to the maximum effective dose of change, which is um, work out five days a week, um, lower your fat, lower your carbohydrates, um, use apple cider vinegar, use berberine, you, you know, you do all the things. Okay, so you're not gonna do all the things. You're certainly not gonna do all the things very long term. And we only care about changes that last. Those are the only ones that count. So what we're gonna do with this example client, and this example client is someone who I have had over and over and over again. There's someone who comes, we're working in a group setting or one-on-one, -on -one. we have two weeks of data and what we notice over and over is their evening meal is a little late, it takes their blood sugar up a little high, and then it stays high all night long. And they wake up with a blood sugar of like 110 which is in the pre, at least in the pre-diabetic range. So they have a diagnosis of pre-diabetes. They might even have a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes by now. But I noticed that overnight, and that's where we're going to start. So instead of giving a whole bunch of changes to make, we find one change. We find the low-hanging fruit that I think is going to be the least amount of work, but give them the best results, the best return on investment. That's what we're going for here. And that change is going to be, I want you to pull that evening meal back so you stop eating two to three hours before your bedtime. I want your blood sugar to come back down to your baseline by the time you go to bed. By the time your head hits the pillow, I want your blood sugar at baseline. That is your goal. That's what you're working for. And then let's see what happens. And that's because of circadian nature of glucose tolerance. What you eat at nine o'clock has a very different impact on your blood sugar than eating the exact same thing at nine o'clock at night, 9 a.m. versus 9 p.m. Your blood sugar will look totally different. So they do this, we make, we might have to adjust a few other things, but they just finish eating a little earlier. And it's not, maybe not easy, but it's not that hard. I talked to them three or four days later and they're like, my overnight blood sugars are so much better. They were like better immediately. It was amazing, but they're not as good as they could be. I'm down to like a hundred overnight and I really should get down a little more. Do you think I should start fasting? Do you think I should add berberine? And you know what my answer is? Not yet. Stay the course. Let's stay the course for at least a few more days, maybe another week. Let's see if it gets better. And that's because good glucose control begets good glucose control. So we know that when you're in the fasted state, when you go to bed, when you stop eating two to three hours before bedtime, you get better sleep. You get better deep sleep. And when you get better sleep, you know what happens. You have better blood glucose control. Your cortisol level goes down. You have lower blood sugar during the day. You have fewer cravings, less snacking. And then oh, you sleep better the next night. And so you get this compounding effect where every day it all just gets better and better and better. And sure, you might go out on a Friday night, eat late, party, get to bed late, and you take two steps back, but then you get right back on it. So we play the long game and we use time. And we see, actually, you got some pretty good results and your blood sugar is much lower now. And then they have a choice after, let's say that's gone on for a week or two, their blood sugar is looking pretty good. And then I ask, so what do you want to do now? Like, I think this is pretty good. I'm feeling better. I'm sleeping better. I'm having less pain. And so my advice to them is you go to stage three. And stage three is in the next video. So stay tuned.